Perched atop a knoll with a breathtaking view of the Pacific Ocean sits a colonial adobe structure that brings to mind the broke monasteries in villages of Western Europe. The bell tower of the adobe church rises above the other buildings. In the distant verdant pastures, sheep are grazing. This idyllic site is the home of San Carlos Borromeo Mission, the second founded by Padre Junipero Serra in beautiful Carmel by the Sea in California. During his 15 years in Alta California, Carmel was the headquarters of the successful network of missions that eventually numbered 21. It was Father Sarah's preferred mission, the temperate climate, the fragrant roses, and pungent pine trees, the mountains on the east and the ocean on the west, all brought back memories of his youth on the island of Mallorca, which travelers have described as the Enchanted Isle. Padre Serra's room is there in the mission complex, carefully restored with a facsimile of his small bed, chest, writing desk, and chair. Everything bare and ascetic and very moving to see. This is where he spent his final hours. In the Basilica, the church was elevated to the status in 1961 because of its beauty and historical significance. It is the Colonial Reredos with its niches filled with Baroque statues. St. Michael, St. Anthony of Padua, St. Bonaventure, St. Charles Bordemeo, among others. The altarpiece is an exact replica of the original that had come from Mexico in 1807. It is in the side chapel to the left of the main altar that we find the subject of this talk. There is Nuestra Señora de Belén, Our Lady of Bethlehem, the oldest Madonna in California and the second oldest in the United States. The life-size statue of Our Lady of Bethlehem, she stands five foot two inches, the same height as Padre Serra, presides over the oratory with a queenly air. She is dressed in a rich silver embroidery dress and cape and wears over her head an exquisite lace veil. On her ears are delicate gold acorn earrings, examples of the first jewelry made in California. On one arm, she tenderly holds the infant Christ, and in her other hand are a silver rose and a rosary. Resting on her head is a foot-high silver crown made for her by a naval lieutenant in 1798 in thanksgiving for her protection during a stormy sea voyage. Above and surrounding her is a golden halo and rays, a piece that the Spanish most appropriately call an esplendor, a word that could be translated in English as halo or aureole. In the background is a large silk cloth embroidered with flowers in soft, delicate colors that Father Sarah himself ordered from China. It is a most expressive, lifelike statue with a queenly presence, the most beautiful and transcendent I have seen in this country. However, this historic statue is virtually unknown and unrecognized. Like the missions themselves that were abandoned and left to deteriorate, and then fortunately restored in the 20th century, the historic facts of this devotion should be revived and her presence on American soil honored. It is to encourage this initiative that I present this paper to the History of the Catholic Faith in the Americas Conference whose noble aim is to revive the Catholic history of our continent. For a century and a half, Franciscan friars had been pleading with the Spanish crown to send missionaries to the realm of California, claimed by the Spanish Empire in 1542 by right of discovery when Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo explored the Pacific coast. King Charles III had wanted to do this, but funds were short and there were always more pressing affairs. In 1768, Spain's furthest post north on the Pacific coast was Santa Maria Mission, 300 miles south of the present Mexican-U.S. border. Then the Russian bear began to growl and threaten. Rumors were spreading that Catherine the Great had decided to occupy Monterey, 
There were other murmurings that the English on the East Coast were seeking a great river to provide a route to establish themselves along the coast of California. Facing these threats, the King commissioned a remarkable man, Don Jose de Galvez, Visitor General of New Spain, to send an expedition to Alta California and secure Spain's hold on that large 500-mile coastal stretch, extending from the port of San Diego to the port of Monterrey. It should be noted that this project, which was already being called the Impossible Mission, was the conception of Galvez and of him practically alone. The Franciscan College of San Fernando, located in Mexico City and in charge of the California missions, was strongly opposed to the ambitious plan to establish the long chain of missions in so remote and vast a territory with so little protection and such meager funds. From his headquarters in Mexico City, the illustrious Visitor General of the realm, a brilliant organizer, stern disciplinarian, and a pious Catholic with an invincible will, had the insight to summon another remarkable man who ultimately secured the success of the plan. That man was the Franciscan friar Junipero Serra, a small man, five foot two inches, already 56 years of age and plagued by a chronic leg infection. The greatness of this small friar lay in his strong faith in missionary zeal, his remarkable organizing capacity, and a likewise tenacious and invincible will. This unlikely pair, the tall, rigorous military man and the minuscule limping friar, have been called the last great conquistadores in the annals of Spain. From their headquarters in Santa Ana in Baja, California, they spent two months preparing for the journey, which they named the Sacred Expedition. The plan was daring. First, garrisons would be established at San Diego and Monterrey. Then, Father Serra would establish 10 missions under military protection, one every 50 miles, to convert and civilize the natives. At this point in our story, the statue of Nuestra Señora de Belén enters. In 1769, the year of the sacred expedition, the Archbishop of Mexico City, Francisco Antonio Lorenzano y Butron, gave the five foot two statue of Our Lady of Bethlehem to the Visitor General. Galvez now decided that the statue should accompany the first expedition to Alta, California. For that end, he loaned this treasure to Father Serra. Father Serra promised the return of the statue of Our Lady of Bethlehem to Mexico City after the cross was planted in Monterrey. Two expeditions were planned, one by sea, headed by Don Gaspar de Portola, who had been named the first governor of Alta, California, and another by land, to which Father Serra attached himself, despite one of his legs being badly ulcerated. Don Galvez placed the sacred expedition under the patronage of the Patriarch St. Joseph, ordering the missionaries to have a mass sung in his honor on the 19th of every month in all the future missions. He also commanded that every seaman and soldier should make his confession and receive communion before departing. On January 6, 1769, the first ship, the San Carlos, set sail from Velicata for the 325-mile voyage to San Diego. Five days later, the second ship, the San Antonio, departed. Into its hold, the bells, altars, and liturgical equipment for the future church missions were packed. Here also, Our Lady of Bethlehem began her voyage. After the third ship to San Jose set sail on May 1st, Don Galvez wrote that his heart had gone with the expedition, even though he could not. On July 1st, 1769, the Portala Serra Land Expedition Party reached San Diego 
and faced a gloomy situation. The San Jose, the third ship of the expedition and the only one not to carry a friar, was shipwrecked with no survivors. The San Carlos had been struck by pestilence and all but one sailor and the cook were dead. The San Antonio, which carried the statue of Our Lady of Bethlehem, had been the first to arrive and was sound, but now its men were falling ill from scurvy. Undaunted, Governor Portola continued the expedition with several adjustments. The San Antonio would unload its cargo, which included the precious treasure of the statue of Our Lady of Bethlehem. Then the ship would return to San Blas to obtain more seamen and supplies for the Monterey mission that would be established further north. On July 14th, a land expedition led by Governor Portola and the diminished force of soldiers and scouts set out to locate the port of Monterey. Father Serra remained behind to establish the new mission San Diego de Alcala, guarded by only eight leather jacket soldiers. Two days after the land expedition departed, on July 16, 1769, Father Junipero Serra planted the traditional great cross on Presidio Hill and said mass under a canopy of twigs. Spain had officially established its presence in Alta, California. Our history books correctly relate that this mission, today called the Mother of the Missions, is the first in the state's 21 missions. What they fail to report, however, is that Our Lady of Bethlehem was there from the outset. Into that first humble straw hut chapel of Mission San Diego, the life-size statue of the Virgin with the Christ Child in her arms was placed, and there she would reign for one year. Father Sarah reports that the Indian women were quite taken with the life-size statue of Our Lady of Bethlehem and the infant child. Thinking the mother very pale and emaciated, they would bring food for her and the infant. In their simplicity, some of the women would even bare their breasts to suckle the Christ child. The work of Our Lady in California had begun. After subjugating an initial Indian attack, the fledgling mission was in a dire situation. Six months had passed, supplies were low, and there was no sign either of the packet ship San Antonio or of Governor Portola in the land expedition to Monterey. On January 24, 1770, Portola and his 73 exhausted men finally returned from their exploratory journey, bearing bad news. Monterey Bay, described so precisely in the annals of Sebastian Vizcaino in 1603, had eluded the quest. The governor feared either the port did not exist or had been filled with water. Father Serra, certain that the Monterey Harbor existed, wanted the holy expedition to continue as planned. Governor Portola was not so sure. With food to last only until the end of April, he decided that unless a supply ship arrived at San Diego by March 15th, they would end the sacred expedition and leave for Baja, California. Father Sarah asked that the date of withdrawal be postponed until March 19th, the feast of St. Joseph, patron of the sacred expedition. Portola granted the extra days. A novena began to St. Joseph to save the sacred expedition. All assisted at daily mass and the recitation of the rosary. The help came, but only at the last hour. Just before sunset on the 19th, Father Sarah caught sight of a ship and the San Antonio entered the harbor. On the last day of the grace period, the relief ship had come. When the circumstances of its landing were learned, all recognized the hand of Providence. The ship was bound for Monterey and had not planned to put into the port at San Diego. It had already passed the San Diego Harbor when it lost one of its anchors and was forced to turn around and land there for repairs. The expedition was saved. In Thanksgiving, the Te Deum Laudamus was sung. For the rest of his life, Father Sarah celebrated a high mass of Thanksgiving to St. Joseph 
on the 19th of each month. The ship San Antonio, whose passengers included Our Lady of Bethlehem and Father Junipero Serra, left San Diego on April 16, 1770. After 46 days of difficult sailing, it reached the harbor of Monterey on May 31st. The land party had already arrived at the port, which for some unexplained reason they had not recognized a year earlier on the first trip. Three days after their arrival, on June 3rd, the Feast of Pentecost, Father Sarah had the joy to sing the first High Mass in Alta California's second mission under the protective eye of Our Lady of Bethlehem. On that day, they officially took possession of the land in the name of Spain and founded the Royal Presidio Mission of San Carlos Borromeo, named in honor of the King's patron saint. A small chapel and altar were erected in the valley. Under the landmark massive oak tree close to the beach, described by Vizcaino 167 years earlier, the mission was established at a high mass in honor of Our Lady of Bethlehem. Father Sarah sent back to the Franciscan general a moving description of that scene. In it, he highlights the role of Our Lady of Bethlehem, who presided over the ceremonies and the Mass. An important part of Our Lady's story, almost forgotten today, is how she left the newly established Monterey Mission, only to return to reoccupy this land she had claimed as hers. On July 3rd, 1770, there was a mass of farewell in honor of the Blessed Virgin, who would be packed away on the San Antonio to be returned to Viceroy Galvez in Mexico City. And now that she has occupied Monterey with us, Father Sarah wrote Galvez in a letter sent in the mail, dispatched by Overland Courier the next day to inform him of the success. I am going to send you back your Madonna as I promised you at La Paz. Tomorrow we shall bid her farewell by singing the Mass before her for the last time. But it was not the last time. The report of the founding of the San Carlos Presidio and Mission reached Mexico City on August 10, 1770. Enthusiasm ran high. New Spain was larger by a 500-mile coast, a feat accomplished by a small troop of soldiers and a handful of friars. The hero of the day was Galvez, who issued a formal statement of the conquest and had it printed for distribution to every part of the Viceroyalty. Two years later, Galvez returned in triumph to Spain. But before he left the New World, he made a decision to send the statue of Our Lady of Bethlehem back to Mission San Carlos Borromeo, which had been moved to Carmel, about five miles south of Monterey and in view of the sea. And so Our Lady of Bethlehem returned to California to a niche over the main altar at the Carmel Mission. Having recourse to Our Lady of Bethlehem became a custom of the captain and the sailors who regularly put in to the port of Monterey. In letters dated May 1771, June 1774, October 1775, and July 1779, Father Sarah makes mention of special masses, he said, to fulfill the promises of sailors who had asked the protection of Our Lady of Bethlehem in times of peril. In 1798, the commander of the frigate, Perissima Concepcion, would give Our Lady a silver crown in thanksgiving for saving his ship on a dangerous voyage, a testimony that this tradition continued for several centuries. It is not the point here to describe the innumerable difficulties Father Sarah faced in his labors in Alta California, not only from the Spanish government officials who opposed the founding of new missions under the friar's command, but also among members of his own community who found him too uncompromising with government officials and non-compliant with the rationalist spirit of the times. These trials are set out in my book, 
Discovering Our Lady of Bethlehem, Her Journey with Father Sarah. In 1783, Father Sarah, utilizing a special privilege granted by the Holy See, resolved to undertake a general tour of the missions to administer confirmation to the more than 2,000 neophytes who were awaiting the sacrament. At each mission, he found abundant harvests and impressive numbers of sheep, goats, horses, and cows. These figures are carefully recorded in the mission archives. Writing the Father Guardian in Mexico, he also noted the spiritual fruit of the Franciscan missionary labor. Quote, 6,000 baptisms and 5,307 confirmations in this population of unbelievers where the name of the Savior had never been pronounced. On July 16, 1784, Father Sarah performed his last confirmation at San Francisco Mission. He also received a revelation that his death was near. He set out for Carmel to end his days on this earth near his heavenly patroness, Our Lady of Bethlehem, whom he always called upon to open the gate of heaven for his entrance, and who had protected and guided him so well in his hard labors in Alta, California. Fray Junipero Serra died peacefully, alone on his wood frame bed, on the day he had predicted, August 28, 1784, after 54 years spent under the vows of religion, 35 of them in the missions, and 14 as president of the missions in Alta, California. He was 71 years old. Today he is in a tomb beneath the floor of the sanctuary of the Basilica San Carlos, close to the side chapel where Our Lady of Bethlehem is honored. After Father Sarah's death, the missions would grow and flourish for almost 20 years. The decline and sad period of secularization began only after Mexico declared its independence from Spain and the Mexican flag replaced the royal standard in the California missions. The new Mexican government, Masonic in its roots, soon decided to close the missions and sell their buildings and lands. In 1833, 12 years after Mexico became independent from Spain, the Mexican government passed a decree of secularization authorizing civil confiscation of all the California mission properties. On paper, the mission Indians were to be awarded half the land and given first priority in purchasing the rest. In fact, most of the mission properties were broken up into large land grants called ranchos and given to ex-military officers who had fought in the War of Independence against Spain or sold to rich Californios who had been coveting the vast holdings of the Catholic missions. The lands that were actually given to the native Indians did not long remain in their hands, as they were easily tricked into trading or giving away their property to unscrupulous speculators. Few retained the title to their properties for more than a few years. Today, progressivism preaches the false myth that the Indians suffered under the rule of the church and the padres. In fact, the opposite is true. Before secularization, the missions were extremely productive and the prosperous, self-sufficient communities were flourishing. Daily life was active and ordered, divided between regular prayer time, work hours, rest, and recreation. While discipline was strict, the Indians trusted the friars who lived and labored among them because they knew they always worked for their best interests, both material and spiritual. The Franciscans considered that the mission lands and property were being held in trust until such time as the Indians were capable of administering them themselves. This promise that the mission lands would be returned to the Indians was even confirmed by a decree of the Spanish Cortes in 1813. Under secularization, the Indians suffered a harsh fate. Both the Indians and Padres were forced off the land. The Indians often suffered brutal treatment at the hands of the land-hungry ranchers and miners who had no concern for their well-being. 
largely because of this bad treatment, between 1845 and 1880, the California Indian population plummeted from 150,000 to 20,400. By 1836, the destruction of mission life in Carmel was complete. The mission lay abandoned and neglected. The church and the quadrangle of the Presidio had fallen into ruin. The once fruitful land lay barren. The corrals that had herded thousands of cattle were broken down and tenantless. In this period of neglect, the buildings were vandalized and many works of art stolen. What happened to the Virgin of Bethlehem during this time of pillage and havoc? The statue was not listed in the Mission Carmel's final post-secularization auction inventory in 1842. To save her from that humiliation, one of the last Mission resident Indian families, the Cantuas, had brought Our Lady of Bethlehem to their home for safekeeping. The Christ child was taken from her and placed in the arms of a statue of St. Joseph at the Royal Presidio Chapel in Monterey. Doña Maria Ignacia Dutra, a member of the Cantua family, became the custodian of Our Lady of Bethlehem. When she moved to Monterey in 1876, she took the statue with her. There were still those who wanted to pay homage to the Virgin of Bethlehem and they would visit her at the family home where Our Lady was enshrined, wearing the wedding dress of Doña Maria. In exile from the California missions over which she had reigned, she was still not completely forgotten by the Indians and colonists whose hearts she had conquered. Fortunately, the history does not end on this sad note. In the mid 20th century, a grand restoration project began overseen by a San Francisco master cabinet maker, Henry John Harry Downing. Through meticulous research and his use of original Spanish sources to guide him, Harry Downing made every effort to duplicate the original mission. Utilizing local media and word of mouth, he made a call for the return of the original mission art and objects. One response came from the then caretaker of Our Lady of Bethlehem, Mrs. Gertrude Ambrosia. In 1948, she returned the statue to Carmel Mission. Newly vested and embellished, Our Lady of Bethlehem was installed in the side chapel and blessed on Christmas Eve of 1944. There was one change, however. The statue of Our Lady of Bethlehem was moved from its original place over the main altar to the Mortuary Chapel. That chapel was renamed Our Lady of Bethlehem Chapel in 2015, during the renovations made at Carmel Mission to honor the canonization of Father Junipero Serra on September 23, 2015. Today, the first thing a pilgrim views upon entering the side chapel is the resplendent statue of Our Lady and the Christ Child beaming under soft spotlights. On Mother's Day in the Marian year, 1954, a solemn pontifical mass was offered at Mission Carmel to honor the statue of Our Lady of Bethlehem, the first statue of Mary to be brought into the state. For one day, our Lady returned to the limelight, placed under a canopy in the church quadrangle. During an evening candlelight ceremony, Our Lady of Bethlehem was crowned Madonna of the Expedition of 1769 with the silver crown and a garland of flowers. The Catholic papers at the time proudly record that more than 4,000 people came to venerate her. In fact, it is a relatively small number when one considers the millions of Catholics in Latin America and Europe who honor their patron virgins on feast days. Up to a million Brazilians travel to the city of Aparecida every year to pay homage to Nossa Senhora Aparecida on her feast day. Half a million Polish pilgrims travel to honor the Black Madonna of Czestochowa, Queen of Poland, 
on each one of the great Marian feast days. In 1954, Catholics in California numbered close to 4 million. For only 4,000 to come out to greet the state's oldest Madonna is not significant. Today, there are more than 11 million Catholics in California, but the visitors to Our Lady of Bethlehem are sparse. The ceremonies and processions, non-existent. It is my hope that by propagating the history of Our Lady of Bethlehem, Catholics not only of California, but throughout the United States will come in greater numbers to visit her and pay her homage. Thank you.